Welcome to another Patho video. Our topic today is Characteristics, Etiology, and Prevention of Iron Deficiency Anemia. This is the third of a three-part series entitled Iron and Iron Deficiency Anemia. Let's talk about iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency. Worldwide, it is estimated that about 9% of the population has at least a moderate degree of iron deficiency anemia, with the prevalence in females being 10% and in males 8%. In the U.S., the prevalence is about 10.5% in Caucasian women and 2% in men of all ethnic groups. Rates can be as high as 20% in Mexican American and African American women. In iron deficiency, there are low levels of serum iron and low levels of ferritin. Hemoglobin in the blood will be low and the percentage of red blood cells or hematocrit will also be low. Red blood cells will be smaller than normal, causing a decrease in mean corpuscular volume, or MCV. These smaller than normal cells can be seen in this peripheral blood smear of someone with iron deficiency anemia. The cells in the smear contain lower the normal amounts of hemoglobin, so the mean corpuscular hemoglobin content, or MCHC, is decreased. Hence the large area of central pallor. Some of the red blood cells may be of irregular shape. This is known as poikilocytosis. What manifestations are seen in patients with iron deficiency? Individuals often show signs of not delivering sufficient oxygen to tissues due to the decreased amounts of hemoglobin. This is often manifested as fatigue, dizziness, muscle weakness, and pallor. The body attempts to compensate for this oxygen deficit by increasing breathing rate and heart rate. Epithelial cells start to break down and can bring about brittle hair and nails that may become spoon-shaped. Epithelial breakdown also causes smooth tongue, difficulty swallowing, and decreased acid production. Depending on the severity of the anemia, a strange condition called pica may develop, where the patient has a desire to eat dirt, ice, or other abnormal substances. Long-term untreated iron deficiency may lead to mental, motor, and emotional deficits in infants and children, as nervous system growth and develop may be affected. Iron deficiency usually arises from one or more of four main causes, including dietary deficiency, decreased absorption, increased demands, and blood loss. Dietary deficiency is more common in developing countries where there is more poverty. But even in developed countries, there are some groups that are especially prone to insufficient intake of iron. The first of these groups is infants. Breast milk doesn't contain large amounts of iron, only about 0.3 milligrams per liter. Cow's milk contains more but doesn't absorb very well. Since infants and children and toddlers are growing rapidly, their demands are higher. Teenagers are often at risk because of poor diet, maybe due to higher amounts of junk food. Pregnant women have a much higher requirement and are also often low. Elderly adults may be low to poor dentition or low income. 
Important measures can be taken to prevent iron deficiency anemia. It is important to avoid cow's milk in infants and to supplement breastfed infants starting at four to six months. Iron fortified formulas and cereals are recommended for inf infants younger than one year of age. For toddlers, ensure intake of iron containing foods and iron containing multivitamins. For treatment, it is important to control blood loss. For example, control external blood loss or control a bleeding duodenal ulcer. Iron may be administered in several different forms, but oral ferrous sulfate is the most common. If oral is not to tolerated or not working, parenteral iron may be given. In summary, here are some key words from the video series on iron and iron deficiency anemia. Please be able to recall their definition and importance. This concludes the video, Iron and Iron Deficiency Anemia Part 3. Thanks for watching.